All right, now that we've kind of talked about doing vector addition with a simple collinear 1D problem, it's time to take things to 2D. As I've mentioned, the methodology doesn't change, just some of the terms that we use. Instead of saying like, you know, the supplied force here, we're gonna be kind of looking at force of gravity. So we're gonna do two different examples. We're gonna separate them up. We're gonna start with an easy, kind of a more common one that you'll see. So we have these three 50 kilogram masses. They're arranged as shown in this diagram. So we want to determine the net gravitational force acting on sphere three. So here's sphere three over here. All of these have equal mass. So the first thing that we would like to do in a force problem is we want to draw our free body diagram. Now we're drawing it once again from the perspective of sphere three, just because we're looking at the net force on that. Now, ignoring 2 for a second, because of 1, sphere 3 is going to want to be pulled towards 1. So we're going to say that the force of 1 on 3 is going to go left here, or in this case, since we're told this is north, it's going west. Now, ignoring 1, because of this body 2 here, or mass 2, 3 is going to want to be attracted towards 2. So we're going to say that the force of 2 on 3 is going to be south. So that's our free body diagram. When we do all the 2D stuff, we also want to draw a vector diagram to look at our net force. So for our vector diagram, first of all, we have that force 1, 3 going west, and then we have this force 2, 3 going south which is going to tell us that our net gravitational force is acting along this line here. So first off, we need to actually find, because this is this F13 is acting sort of like an X component, F23 is acting like a Y component, so we need to find the magnitudes of the two components first. So we're going to determine the magnitudes of FG Or of F13 and F23. So for F13, it's going to be this G times mass 1 times mass 3 divided by that distance between R13, R between 1 and 3 squared. Now it's given in centimeters. We don't like that. We want that in meters. We're also going to want this in meters. So we know that we have 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Our two masses are both 50 kilos, 50 kilos, and then we're going to divide this by 0 0.050 meters squared. Again, don't forget that conversion of centimeters to meters. So let's have a look at what we got here. So we're going to get 6.67 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons. Okay, not too bad. Now, we can also calculate F23, which is going to be G mass 2 mass 3 divided by R23 squared. Now, before we do all this punching in of the numbers and that, G is the same M2 and M3 are both 50, and that distance between 2 and 3 is also 0 0.050 meters, and then we're going to square that. Basically, we're redoing this calculation here. So I'm just going to say same numbers as above. So without repunching that into my calculator, we also know that this is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons easy for us. Don't, don't do all these extra calculations that you really don't need to do. So let's find the resultant now. Because now I have my two components. Let's look at what we got. So the resultant, so we have, we have this F13. We have this F23. And then of course we have our net force acting along this line here. And of course, we're going to want to determine this angle. Well, to get the magnitude, we're still doing Pythagorean theorem because F13 and F23 make a right triangle. 
we can certainly do this Pythagorean theorem. So the net force is magnitude. It's just going to be F13 squared plus F23 squared. So we've found these two values already. And let's see what we got here. So we are going to get about mm, 9.4 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons. So that covers us for the magnitude of our net force. To calculate the angle, some of you may see this already, but both of these sides are exactly the same in length. If we're going to do tangent of that, or inverse tangent, we know that if both of these sides have the same length, this is an isosceles triangle, and it's an isosceles right triangle, so we can, know, we can pretty much say instantly that that's 45 degrees. But, in case you don't buy that, we can certainly just show you the angle. So we get tangent inverse of, well, F23 is going to act my opposite. F13 is going to act as my adjacent. So I'm going to have tangent inverse of 6.67 times 10 to the 5 minus 5 newtons divided by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons, which is going to give me 45 degrees. Now, based on what I've drawn here, this is 45 degrees south of west. But 45 degrees is special if you can't really screw up the direction because 45 degrees south of west is 45 degrees west of south. So it really doesn't matter, but just to be consistent with my drawing, I've drawn south of west. So I have my magnitude, I have my direction. So the last thing is just to tie it up. So I could say that the net force acting on sphere three, it's 9.4 times 10 to the five, 10 to the minus five newtons, and it's acting 45 degrees south of west. So this is no different than anything we've done already with 2D vector addition. Like I said, we just changed some terminology. Like in this case, we're looking exclusively at force of gravity. So we're gonna try a little bit more challenge example next, but we'll get to that in the next video.